Brian White is in so much trouble. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I don't know, Brian, what have you done now? I mean, my, 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 uh, feed on X blew up last night. Somebody says, have you seen what Brian's done now? Oh my gosh. I, so I, I tried my best yeah. to figure it out, but you're going to have to explain it. So blew up is an exaggeration. One person got very upset with me. There was, uh, the big thing is, uh, Elon is not infallible. And I know it's uh, a good career. It would be a good career move for me to say otherwise. But there are some things that he does that uh, don't always make sense. And some things he firmly believes that require some pushback. So one example would be uh, there was discussion that at one point he wanted to make the new Model 3 without a steering wheel. And the board and the designers all had to push back and say, this could destroy us. We can't do this. That turned out to be a correct amount of pushback. So what had happened was on Twitter, Elon had um, raised some issues that had upset a number of people uh, in regards to the migrant crisis in the Black Sea. Uh, there are uh, uh, German NGOs that uh, fund uh, rescue operations and uh, a group in Germany who is uh, a pretty ugly, pretty outrageous, pretty terrible group, had some things to say about it. And it appeared that Elon's post was boosting them. And a number of news outlets took exception to that. And Elon later walked it back and clarified, I don't know who this group is. I don't know anything about them. I don't share their values. At the time of this conversation, he had not yet done that. Uh -huh. And and Twitter is, X is not the best place for nuance. It doesn't fit in a post. A post is very short. And when you have the biggest megaphone on the planet, an ounce of caution may be warranted when you decide uh, which messages you're going to boost. And I... Uh, had a discussion with a gentleman, a former follower who wanted to, um, who, who just disagreed. And I said, the, the problem is there are people uh, who do not like migration of any kind. And those people are the ones who are pushing this message initially. And uh, the whole reason those rescue boats exist was because there were dead babies on the beach. And I think the approach that they took to addressing it is wrong. The approach they took is, well, let's just make sure there's no more pictures of babies. And the way <laughs> to do that is, is, well, that's it. They Just rescue boats means no more pictures of babies, right? It doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't fix the underlying problem that's driving these people to a level of desperation. That means they look at a rickety little death trap and say, I might die tonight, but if I stay here, my odds of dying are much worse. Stopping the boats doesn't stop the migration. It doesn't, it just changes where the deaths take place. And this gentleman decided that that I'm Tesla Q and he had been a follower of mine, which is strange because, and I looked at his post history. Uh, he seems like a generally smart, generally nice guy, but he decided I'm going to cancel Brian. I'm going to, I'm going to be the cancel culture I believe in. And I'm going to start contacting everybody that's ever had Brian on their show and tell them cancel him. So that's why you got a message. That's right. So, um, so I have a couple of thoughts on all of this. Sure. <laughs> um, number one, um, I, so let, let's, let's start maybe at the 35,000 foot level, as opposed to the Brian level. Let's go way up here for a minute. Sure. How do you feel about uh, Elon's um, being way out there in terms of his commentaries whether you agree with the commentary or not, do you think do you think that it's wise for the CEO of what will ultimately be the largest company on earth, who has the biggest megaphone on the planet by far at this point? Uh, do you think it's wise for him to 
to take a stand and put it out there if he knows in advance, in his knower, because he's smart. If he knows in advance, this is going to hurt the sales of my company. So Elon's a package deal. Um, you can't, you can't say I like the the genius without saying I hate them, you know, and still say I hate the madness. He's a mad genius. It's all you can do. Um, if you tried to, uh, you know, he's a Siamese twin. If you tried to separate them, you'd kill them both. Don't do that. So uh, should he be saying things that can hurt the company? Well, it depends what the things are. If it's something you really truly believe in, um, sometimes you have to say things that are unpopular and maybe not good for your career. That's like why I push back is because I firmly believe that uh, boosting the truly terrible people is a is a is a thing that I'm willing to risk hurting my career over. I just I believe that firmly. And people say, well, what, what did he say that was so bad? Buddy, I'm not going to play that game. We'll, we'll spend all day going in circles. All I can tell you is the people who say let them die at sea were cheering for the comment because they knew the context of it, the context that he had not yet had time to look into. So should he be allowed to say things? Absolutely. Should he be allowed to say things that can hurt his company? I mean, I guess I still have to say I think so. Uh, is you know, is he allowed to have strong opinions? Of I mean, we all have. We all. I think we all have strong opinions. I I guess I've met a few people who don't. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I don't think someone should necessarily take away his megaphone. I know in the book, the Walter Isaacson book, the recent one, that there were conversations between him and the board, where the board sat him. Uh, uh, Kimball Musk called him uh, an expletive idi moron or so an idiot or something like that uh, because of some of the things he was saying were so uh, out there. And I don't know what the things were, but Elon has said some pretty out there things yes, at different yes. times. <laughs> yeah. And I think some of it is maybe not having the best handle on the context. Some of it is things that maybe are popular but shouldn't be said some of it is you know um a lack of sleep or a, a you know a lack of attention or a lack of uh of considering the consequences uh but i think the important thing is that everyone needs some pushback at, at times and there are a number of people who don't feel that way when it comes to their favorite singer or their favorite actor or their favorite you know you've seen some pretty pretty ghoulish uh celebrities being defended by other celebrities because they're my friend yeah yep. but if <laughs> if danny masterson really did that maybe we shouldn't defend him um so although everyone needs pushback sometimes no one is infallible my apologies to the pope uh but <laughs> there's you know, uh, at, at the same time, I think trying to, you know, cancel, cancel me for saying that maybe don't, you know, give uh, validation to, to the people, the, the people who are cheering for it are people we can agree are, are terrible. Probably. Yes. Yes. I think well, <laughs> the Elon did not know the context of it. He later admitted that, so um, it's it's unfortunate. So you and I are both political creatures. Uh, we okay. come at, we come at uh, most of our political philosophies, I think, from different sides of uh, the fulcrum. You and I are friends. We become friends. Eh. <laughs> sort of. Maybe no, of course maybe, we are. Maybe of course I, we are. But but <laughs> we but uh, like. You know, we've been compared to Frick and Frack and some other, you know, crazy wild people out there. Maybe it should be Hannity and Combs. But I, I think I think I think we're more the odd couple. The odd couple. There you go. I think that that would make you, Felix. I'm not sure. But I'm not going to use my forum here to talk about politics very often. I think mm -hmm. that's Elon, too. 
you don't use your forum. I don't think, I don't watch you 100% of the time, but I think you rarely bring politics into your into your uh, particular show. Um, and if you do, it's going to be rare because this isn't the place. This isn't the place. I bring politics in uh, when it's a matter of policy. So when uh, a state is considering a, a charging incentive or uh, a state is considering a new uh, use tax on EVs, um, I don't, it, some of those end up being uh, partisan issues. I don't think they should be. And I'm not talking about, uh, poli you know, I'm not talking about parties. If I were to say this particular, you know, city councilman, um, generally when it comes to the city council folk who are trying to pass these absurd things, I don't even know what their party is. And uh, I don't care. I think their party is, uh, you know, jerk. I don't know. Cause, <laughs> cause we're trying to do good for the world here. Let's just not punish EV drivers for driving an EV. Uh, yeah, I don't, I will routinely unfollow, um, accounts on X that spend too much time on politics. And I don't care what your politics is. If it's left, if it's right, if it's independent, if it's libertarian, I'm not on X for politics. I'm there for analysis and it's not and you personal need it. and you need it. It's fair. And I need, I, I need so much analysis, Randy. <laughs> they they're charging me like 50 bucks an hour. I can't do it. An hour. Actually, actually it's probably more than that now, isn't it? <laughs> I, I guess my, I guess my joke is could use to be updated, but well, no, that's uh, the, maybe why you need so much more is you've only been paying fifty dollars <laughs> an hour. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I need more attorneys. These seventy-five dollar an hour attorneys. Oh my gosh, you're paying seventy-five. Where'd you find him? Home Depot. Uh, the uh, yeah, he was in front. Great guy. Uh, terrible at law, uh, but affordable. <laughs> yep. No, the um. No, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it. And there are people who hold political opinions that I find pretty bizarre. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm allowed to still be friends with them. If I, you know, like I've said before, I, together with you, I've said this, there is, I don't know if I've ever met someone who shares all my political views. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that's a world I want to live in. Uh, that that sounds like a dictatorship where we all really love dear leader, you know, because because let's face it, Kim Jong is pretty awesome. He's, he's a great uh, guy. He's a great guy. 100% of us agree. <laughs> At least his we, sister. His sister. I'm not sure about well, it. They, they hold elections. He gets 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. It's that's crazy. And it, the the idea that someone would decide that I'm Tesla Q is that's batty. Nonsense. <laughs> that's nonsense. Um, there are there are things that I push back on. Blinker stocks. I I just think getting rid of them is silly. I think it's a silly idea. I I the yoke. I had no problem with it. A lot of people push back. It's gone. You can still get it if you want it, but it's no longer the thing. Yeah. Um, without that pushback, where would we be? And without it's, the experimentation, uh, without throwing ideas out there, where would we be? So it's kind of like the it's it's the whole thing. I think that Elon is so intent on with regard to free speech. You know, you don't get you're not going to get progress if folks aren't trying new things, and you're not going to get progress if there isn't the opportunity for people to fight back. You know. Uh, express their negative feedback. Elon has famously said over and over and over again, he loves negative feedback. He proves that by his availability on X and the fact that he is responsive to the things that people are putting up on X. I mean, that combination, I don't know how you could ask her for better leadership than someone who takes the risks and is willing to take the flack. There are a number of prominent folks on social media who agree with everything Elon does, no matter what it is, no matter, I mean, if it's a typo, they're like, well, that's my typo now. Um, I don't think that helps anyone. Uh, it is, it feels very self-serving uh, for their 
careers. And if I had done that, maybe I would actually have a more successful career, but um, I have to stay true. I have to stick, I stick to the facts. I'm an analyst. I stick to the facts. If the facts lead me in a direction, that's where they go. And I, you know, I, I can't, I can't make stuff up uh, with a clear conscience, I guess. All right. Well, again, once again, we have, we have faced an important issue here. Because the most important thing in life right now is making sure your numbers go up. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. we want right. your numbers to go up. We don't want anybody getting in the way of that progress. <clears throat> and yeah. uh, so I wanted to make my contribution in any way that I could to making sure that your numbers go up. And at the same time, uh, my, my politics are a little more out there than yours are. I do talk about politics from time to time. And, um, you know, sometimes people... You know, I get comments. I get both. Well, and people will take exception to it. You can, <clears throat> you can go all the way to one side or the other or a third direction and still find an audience. Um, but my audience, I believe, comes to me for analysis, and that's what I try to provide. And <clears throat> there are conservatives who watch my show. There are liberals. I did get, uh, after we had commented about EV credits and uh administrations that support them versus don't i i i i got comments saying you know what i'm unsubscribing and i hope everyone joins me and i responded saying you're surprised that an ev channel supports policies that support evs i don't know i i don't know what to say about that that's that that caught me off guard it's <laughs> right it's a little surprising <clears throat> Well, you, you're, then you would be assuming, of course, that everybody that's involved in the political discourse uses their brain. Wow. Uh, but it wasn't political. I didn't think it was political discourse. Um, I, I said, if you're a single issue voter and this is your issue, then look for candidates that support it. There are, there are candidates of all stripes that do support the most american made car the most uh efficient car the i mean it's got so much going for it it shouldn't be a political issue if it is uh i well I don't know. clear clearly it is an issue and this is the thing that i've probably right. talked about more, more than anything else in terms of politics on my channel has been i don't get my own tribe I'm mm. trying to figure out what is wrong with folks that are right of center right now who are um, concerned. I mean, I know where I know where it's coming from. Nobody wants to be forced to do anything. And there is a great number of people, even people I know, my personal friends right now, who feel that they're being forced to buy a, a an e-car sometime, an EV car sometime mm. in their future. And that is that grates against the the uh i think the american thinking in general is being forced is not a good thing so when that's taking place i can understand why there's this kickback but by the same token the kickback then becomes ridiculously illogical in terms of the reasons why people are not buying an ev because of of things that are being stated right now by major leadership on the right mm. side of the, of the of the equation uh, they're saying things that just are nonsensical and people that I respect, people that I have cool. great respect. For. Yeah. There are also Democrats who are pro oil. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, last week I had a video with Jan from Tesla fix where we discussed a world without cars, because there are people who believe the world oh, yes. should have no cars. A world without people. <clears throat> well, <laughs> <laughs> that we didn't discuss that. Uh, but the world without cars thing, the central takeaway was even in places where mass transit is widely available, affordable and effective, like Germany, like the UK, uh, car ownership is still at 80 percent. What changes is that people drive fewer miles per year. And I don't know how many of the people in the comments actually watched the video because half the comments thought I was some crazy person who's thinking we should never have cars and the other half were crazy people thinking i hate buses <laughs> and i didn't say either of those things i don't know did you did you 
Are you commenting on the wrong video? I don't know what you're doing. It's like, well, that's, that's political. Which party? Which party am I supporting? I don't even know. It doesn't make sense. So I don't know. My, my message is calm down, breathe, and remember that even our biggest heroes can be wrong at times. <clears throat> and if I you think I, yeah, if you think I hate Elon, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> somebody's somebody's really <laughs> is out there. <laughs> well, one, I, one guy said, "Oh, what? Did, uh, I'm going to guess you sold off all your stock." <laughs> why? Why? Why would you think that? Well, I thought this was worth airing. I hope that I hope everybody out there uh, enjoyed this. We'll probably get seven views, you know, because <laughs> because I know what you really want to know is how many how many Tesla vehicles are we going to sell next quarter? Well, we did that video earlier. Hopefully, you'll take a look at that one as well. But I did want to get this one out there uh, and, because this is exactly how I feel about it. It's like, come on, guys. Uh, yes, there are there are people that I. Uh, don't agree with, I still hang out with them. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> uh, you know, at my family parties, at the Thanksgivings and the Easter's and the St. Patty's days, you've got far extremes on both sides. And I don't know, we managed to get by. I don't know. Somehow, somehow. Okay, somehow. okay Ryan, it's, it's been amazing as always. And I look forward to doing it at least one more time. <laughs> <laughs> And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you. Um, if you don't mind, I do want to pitch my little uh, my little device here. I have these uh, little devices for twenty five bucks. You you've, you you can't believe how cool this is. Look at how thick the stainless. I mean, holy mackerel! It comes in <laughs> it comes in a camo as well. It's a can opener. I mean, I'm sorry, not a can opener, a bottle opener. So you got you got your bottle opener here too. And it's got a magnet on the back, so you can slap it up on your fridge. I mean, huh? Is this good or what? So anyway, you just send 25 bucks to my PayPal account. It's down in the information below. Just click on there. You can send it 20. Now, if you're out of the country, I got to charge you an extra 20 bucks for uh, for freight. So and or if you join my Patreon, I'll give you one for at the $10 level. I'll give you one for free. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.